Welcome to the ultimate hatch wrench tutorial for oxygen not included. I improved my original automated hatch wrench design and today I'm not only going to show you what I improved but how I design automation circuits and the techniques I use to optimize them. I'm calling this the best automated hatch wrench version 2.0. This build features two incubators, infinite and monitored food storage, increased accuracy and efficiency of the lullaby buff application, automated excess hatch evolution, and much, much more. So without further ado, let's dive right in. A great place to start is by taking inventory of what has changed since the last version because Let's be honest, mistakes were made. But if you haven't watched my first video on automated hatch ranching, I highly recommend you watch it first for context. I'll put a link in the description. The basic ranch stack has pretty much stayed the same. The airlock to sweeper upgrade method used in the previous version can still be used with this version to jumpstart a carnivore run early game, provided you have hatches and a rancher. There are still three hatch ranches stacked vertically with an incubation room, food storage, and evolution chamber above them. The ranches are still 25 tiles wide, and four tiles tall with 96 tiles in total area. The perfect size to accommodate eight hatches. This door is responsible for catching falling hatches if the ranch is low or allowing them to continue falling to the ranch below it once full. One thing we did change is the width of the living area which was shortened by one tile. This was done to increase the size of the area to the left of each ranch which can be used for other things like farming and storage. More on that later. In doing this we also removed the redundant feeder and the critter drop off which are completely unnecessary and that is pretty much it for the ranches most of the big changes happened above here we added a second incubator to the incubation room that will help keep up with restocking the ranches once hatches reach the end of their life cycle and need replaced though one incubator is theoretically enough to service three ranches in practice it can lead to delayed hatch replacement which can cause egg production shortages and is just plain inefficient in order to accommodate two incubators the door logic requires a complete overhaul since there may be multiple hatches waiting for delivery. During the redesign, I did my best to reduce the number of sweepers and loaders in the top area. I also simplified food storage by making it a drop chute onto a pressure plate. This way the food supply can be monitored and thereby more easily managed since you can connect the pressure plate to a notifier that will let you know if your food supply is getting low before you start starving hatches. I reduced the overall size of the upper chambers so one sweeper can cover everything. I also changed the cycle sensor to a timer sensor. This is because a cycle sensor only allows a maximum period of one cycle. The lullaby buff lasts for exactly one cycle and then needs to be reapplied by a ranching duplicate. This takes time in addition to that one cycle cooldown before an egg needs the buff to be reapplied. A cycle sensor will quickly get out of sync with the buff causing the egg to not have the buff every other cycle. This drastically reduces incubation efficiency. This is why it is always best to use a timer sensor to automate an incubator. To build this we will need to unlock several technologies in the research tree. This includes everything up to animal control and the food section researched, mechanized airlocks in the gases section, along with advanced automation in computers and everything up to solid control in solids. All right, now that we have the technology, let's get building. Here's what I like to call the basic ranch stack. It is the three ranches I mentioned earlier, each 25 tiles wide and four tiles tall for a total of 100 tiles. Place a pneumatic door with a mechanized airlock underneath it, six tiles from the right. We can go ahead and put one tile above it and one additional tile in the upper left corner, which I initially forgot to place, to reduce the total room size to 96 tiles, which is the maximum size for a ranch. This will also prevent our hatches from escaping the room to the right by jumping over the pneumatic door. We can follow up by adding a grooming station, critter feeder, loader, receptacle, and sweeper in these positions. Do this for each of the three ranches. Next, let's build out the incubation room. We can start by building a room the same width and height as the ranches below. We won't require the whole width for what we will be doing up here, but having this floor the same width as the others gives the stack a nice rectangular shape. Note the airlock we added to the floor in the same position as the ranches below. This is where hatches will be dropped into ranges below. Let's continue by placing two incubators, two loaders, two drop chutes, and a pressure plate followed by three tiles. The lowest drop chute is where our evolution chamber will be so we can go ahead and add a bottle emptier above it and add at least 400 kilograms of liquid. Two full duplicate deliveries should do the trick. This amount of liquid is just enough to drown 
I mean, evolve any hatch that is unlucky, I mean, lucky enough to end up in this chamber. Go ahead and deconstruct the bottle emptier and add a sweeper at the top. We can now add four pneumatic doors in these locations. This allows us to have four chambers, one for food storage, one for the evolution chamber we just filled, and two for holding replacement hatches. Again, I set these rooms up in this way because it enables our single sweeper to cover the evolution chamber, the food supply tile, and loaders, as well as the incubators when they require an egg. Let's also add another mechanized airlock above the drop door. There is a reason why this door is an airlock rather than a pneumatic door, and that is because we don't want any hatches accidentally falling through it like they would a pneumatic door when it's closed. Okay, we're getting close. So now is a good time to connect our stack to power and hook up all our shipping stuff with rails. These two systems are simple and should be fairly easy to duplicate, so here are the overlays for power and shipping. I'll include them again toward the end of the video with the other overlays for quick reference. Alright, we have a solid ranch stack, but we need to add the most important part the automation. Now I can totally just tell you what to build and where to build it and that's totally fine if you want to skip down to the overlays. But I want to take a minute to explain how I came up with this series of automation circuits. But before we get started we need to cover a little Boolean algebra and why we need it to help us design a comprehensive and fully automated door solution. Now I know what most of you are thinking and yes I'm about to talk about algebra. Please don't click away. I promise it will help you learn to approach your automation design challenges in Ani like a pro. So why Boolean algebra? Well, automated circuits in Ani can send either a red or a green signal. This is akin to a binary signal of zero for red and one for green. The operation possibilities for such a circuit are nearly infinite and are only limited by circuit complexity. One need only look at any electronic device. Everything happening inside is happening in ones and zeros, ons and offs, millions of times each second. The automation signals in ANI, green or red, on or off, akin to binary ones and zeros, can also be expressed as true or false. In fact, this is what Boolean algebra is all about. Operations on logical values representing binary variables as truths. One equals true, zero equals false. This branch helps us deal with and simplify complex logic circuits. In Boolean algebra, we use letters to represent variables. When we do things with these variables, we generally do them with one of three operations. And, not, or or. Do these sound familiar? They should because these are the three logic gates available in the automation build tab. Alright, let's learn a little bit about these operators and their ANI equivalent logic gates. We can start with the NOT operator since it is fairly straightforward. Whenever a variable has NOT performed on it, it becomes the opposite value. True becomes false, false becomes true. The same applies to the NOT gate in ANI. A green signal becomes a red signal, a red signal becomes a green signal. A Boolean variable such as A that has NOT performed on it can be written with a line above it in a Boolean expression. We can read it as not A. The AND operator compares two variables and the result will only be true if both variables are true. When two signals are input into an AND gate, the output will also only be green if both inputs are green. The AND operator is performed as multiplication in a Boolean expression. If we were to AND A and B in a Boolean expression, we would simply place them side by side as A, B, or A times B. The OR operator also compares two variables, but the result is true if either variable is true. The OR gate in ANI will output a green signal if either of its inputs are green. Otherwise, it will output red. The OR operator is performed as addition in a Boolean expression. So let's switch gears just for a second and talk about our goal. The ultimate goal here is to accurately and reliably restock our breeder ranches as hatches die of old age. To do this, a couple of things need to happen. We need hatches to be incubated when any ranch has less than eight in it. Once they are hatched, they need to be delivered one at a time, being careful not to overfill any ranches. This was one of the main issues with the last iteration of my ranch stack. Here's a detailed illustration of our upper incubator and evolution chambers with the doors that we are going to be referencing. The purpose of door E is to evolve any excess hatches that may hatch inside the incubators during extended periods when the breeder ranches are full and do not require replacements. The incubators shouldn't activate due to their own control circuit, but it is possible that they may receive a lullaby buff just before the ranches are full or naturally hatch if enough cycles pass without needing deliveries. 
If too many replacement hatches are awaiting delivery, it will cause our automation logic to fail and possibly overfill our ranches. This door should only open when there is at least one hatch in room one and two in room two. When these conditions are met, we can expect to see green signals from A and C. This can be expressed using the Boolean algebra we were just talking about as A, C, or A times C. So the function of door E is equal to A times C. This will allow the hatch in and close the door on them once they are inside. The purpose of door F is to control the number of critters in room two and should only open under three conditions. The first is when there are one or more hatches in room one and there are none in room two. This is because we need to make sure that if we have hatches on standby to restock the ranches, there is always one in room two ready for delivery and no more. The second situation in which we want F to open is when there are no hatches in room one, but there is more than one in room two. This will give us the ability to control the population in room two by removing hatches one at a time. The third is a fringe case I discovered during testing. If the breeder ranches are in need of hatches and there are two in room two, it is possible for both of them to jump on top of door F, causing both rooms to appear empty, which would close door F, causing them both to become stuck, thereby breaking our door logic. To prevent this, door F should remain open when both rooms are empty. This will also make door F remain open when there really aren't any hatches, but that is okay. So we can represent the function of door F as A and not B, or not A and not B, or not A and C. The purpose of door G is to deliver hatches to the breeder ranches. However, we cannot ensure that the ranches are accurately restocked if more than one hatch is allowed access to drop door G at the same time. This is why G should never open unless there is only one hatch in room two, but not more than one, and the ranches are requesting a hatch. We therefore say that door G should open when room A and D are true and C is not. Therefore, our function for door G is B and not C and D. Now, the reason I took the time to explain Boolean expressions is because we will use it to simplify the logic for our door control solution. If we just built the circuits for our logic using only our operating criteria we described for each door, how would we know if it was the simplest, most efficient way using the least number of gates and the least necessary amount of complexity? The answer is we wouldn't. Not only does writing our logic in Boolean expressions make it shorter and easier to read, it also allows us to reduce it using mathematical and Boolean theorems. Does anyone remember the distributive property of mathematics? Well, we have that in Boolean algebra too, and this is where we're going to smuggle in the real algebra work. Oh, you kind of snuck up on me there. I am very, very sneaky, sir. I see that. Basically, if multiple groups share a common variable, you can factor it out. If we take another look at the Boolean expression for door F, you will notice that we can factor not B out of the first two terms, giving us not B and A or not A, or not A and C. Now we could have factored not A out of the second and third terms, but there is a very important reason why we didn't. Factoring not B out of the first two leaves us with A or not A. This particular expression is known as being equal to one. Think about it. Whether A is true or false, the statement will always end up being true. Because when two things are compared using the OR operator, if one of them is true, the answer will always be true. And the opposite of whatever value true or false A is, one of these is gonna be true. Furthermore, if we and something that is always true with not B, the result will always be whatever not B's value is. So now our expression for door F has been simplified down to not B or not A and C. We were able to eliminate several unnecessary logic gates in just a few simple steps. And since you may have noticed how complex automating several doors to open and close under very specific conditions can be, you may also see why I chose to use it to find the solution. Like I always say, if you want the best solution, you gotta be willing to do the math. And I'm kidding, I never say that. I just made that up to try to be funny. Now I'm gonna show you how I took these expressions and turned them into an actual logic circuit. Unfortunately, there is no magic to show you here, at least none that I'm aware of. I came up with this layout by trying to minimize signal overlaps and the number of inputs necessary to complete the overall circuit. All I did to implement this design was I rotated it, and then I built the logic gates out of our oxygen not included gates and connected them in the same way. 
We can start with the ranch and the incubator automation, which is essentially the same as the previous version. Each ranch has a critter sensor that is set to above seven and critters only. Each sensor is then connected to the airlock and a NOT gate below it. The output for each NOT gate is connected vertically and connected to an AND gate in the incubation room. Note the two bridges we added. These are to prevent our automation wire from locking the pneumatic entrance doors to the incubation room and the ranch below it. The other input to this AND gate is connected to a timer sensor set to 75 seconds green signal and 600 seconds red signal. This will ensure that the incubators are turned on once every cycle, which is 600 seconds long, creating a lullaby error for a rancher to complete. The AND gate output is then connected to both incubators. We can also put a dupe sensor above the incubators, which is also connected to the input of both incubators. That will keep the incubators active if our rancher arrives late in the activation period, ensuring the lullaby is not interrupted before completion. We also wired up this light to increase the lullaby errand speed with the lit workspace buff it provides when on. Okay, one last teeny tiny thing we need to build. We need to build the door control automation circuit, and this one is a bit of a doozy. I tried building this one with straight automation wire, but the circuit is too complex for such a compact design. The simplest way to approach building our door control circuit is to start with the logic control we designed. This room to the left of our chambers is going to be where we put all that fancy logic. Given how we designed our logic circuit, there will be two separate automation ribbons. The top ribbon will be for our logic inputs and the bottom for the door control outputs. With that sorted, let's grab each of our four inputs and prepare them to be connected to the top ribbon. Each input will need to be written onto the ribbon using a ribbon writer like so. Make sure to set each writer to the correct bit. Note that the selected bit on each writer increases sequentially from left to right. The upper secondary chamber critter sensor is connected to bit 1. Primary chamber top critter sensor is connected to bit 2. The lower to bit 3 and the ranch stack hatch request connected to the AND gate is connected to bit 4. Note the bridge on the bit 3 connection to prevent it from interfering with the left incubator activation circuit. Connect all the top ribbon readers and writers with the automation ribbon to complete the input circuit. On to the door control connections. We can start with door E. It can be wired directly to the AND gate output closest to it, requiring one bridge to avoid connection to the bottom conveyor loader. Okay, one door done. We can then connect door F to a ribbon reader set to bit 2, including a bridge to avoid connection to door H. Do the same for door G, again adding a bridge to avoid unwanted connections, and wire it to another ribbon reader set to bit 3. Finally, connect these bottom ribbon readers and writers with automation ribbon. Alright, our work is complete. However, we can remove the leftmost bit. I initially added it to control door H, but it is unnecessary if we simply have a duplicate toggle the door to open. Sorry for any confusion that may have caused as I caught this late in the production of this video. That said, here are the overlays for this build. Now we could call this done, but I wanted to go a little bit further with this build, and if you're feeling spicy, then I have a few bougie upgrades we can throw on this stack. Namely, at a glance fullness indicators using pixel packs, and repurposing the extra space to the left of each ranch by turning it into storage or farming areas. And here are the overlays for those optional upgrades. Feel free to mix and match them to meet your needs in each ranch since they are fairly modular. Alright, we covered a lot of stuff today, and I'm going to include a link in the description to download a save of this build. It also includes several of my previous builds, along with some things I have been experimenting with. So I hope you enjoy that. If you watched this far, I want you to know how much I appreciate you. Thank you so much for supporting me by watching the content I make. So, what did you learn? How would you improve this build? Can it be broken? Or do you have another logic problem you would like to see me solve? I'd love to hear what you have to say. Let me know in the comments below. I hope wherever you are, or whatever you're doing, you're having a wonderful day. And until next time, friends, later.